you kind of have the opportunity to try new things if you want to. And I think you're allowed to go at your own pace, I think. Yeah. It's, um, it's very mixed in, in that yes. sense, in that you could be running at very different yeah. paces within yeah. a group or, or within different pieces. And there's such yeah. a range of ability and experience. I mean, people like Andrew, Lindsay, Rob, who've, who've experienced so much more of it. And then there's people like me who've kind of got some experiences and sort of slightly coming at it from a different angle. And then you've just got people who've just seen us and think, oh, that looks fun. And they come and they don't know anything about it. And I think, I think it's nice to work in groups like that, not not always be surrounded by people who consider themselves experts or, you know, where no one is an expert, so it takes ages. It's nice to be in that mixed, mixed group. Yes, some days it gets quite spiritual as well. Mm. There's a, there's a, there's a mm. sort of sense of almost being outside of yourself yes. within, within the music. As, uh, yeah. As, uh, as something takes hold. It's very... Um, quite focusing but mm, in, a, yeah. uh, in a way that enlarges your horizon I did, well what I really like is I love that feeling that everything's interlocking and it's getting more and more and more complex and you've got all these um, coalescing lines and then suddenly the gong plays and it's the reverberations they just fill out they fill out the harmonies and it suddenly puts a whole new whole new colour onto the onto the music as it's been already and it's just wonderful that that suddenly swells up and then it dies away and and then you, there's this pause and then again you get a new note and it's just I, mm. I really love that that feeling and I just now I'm, I'm anticipating think oh I'm going to play this note and it's going to be this this this, this feeling is going to come out of it and it's it's great I think my favourite by far was when we officially started the concert for the Wyang um, last year. Was it last year? It was last year. Uh, I, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it must have been last year's Wyang. And we, oh. obviously we've been rehearsing for weekends and weekends. Mm. It was like mm. four day rehearsals, mm. a Saturday, Sunday, and evening rehearsals, and Thursdays as well as Tuesday. It was so hectic. Mm. And then on the day, um, we had quite a few people come from South Bank to um, help play as well, just to fill in all the missing gaps. And it was our first, it was our opening piece. I can't remember the piece, actually. I can't remember at all which one it was. But um, obviously there was, there was, we had the cello pong playing and um, we had, um, Sophie was on the rebab and we had everyone clapping and mm. singing. And there was one, I was playing Vonang and I had to, I had to get into my inbound and Sakara mm. and things like that. And I found myself properly getting the goosebumps when um, the vocalists really came oh, out. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, oh, <laughs> I had to keep myself contained because there was obviously there was Matthew at the front with all the puppets mm. and things and all the lighting was down. There was children sitting all around us on cushions mm. and things. Mm. And it was just the best atmosphere I've ever had with Gamelan. And it, obviously that took me four years of playing Gamelan <laughs> to get to that point where I suddenly thought, wow, I love what I'm doing right now. Because mm. I did really, I, I was properly flared up and I was like... This is amazing, um, and yeah, that's that's probably my ultimate at the moment. It's like, mm. the opening piece of the wire. Well, when when things are going right, um, it makes the the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Um, and well, I mean, it's it's one of those unanswerable questions. What uh, what it is about music that makes it work? But I suppose part of it is the um, is the group. Um, ethos of gamelan um, so which connects to what I was saying earlier about ego the English gamelan orchestra which seems such a misnomer to me maybe they were being ironic I don't know uh, but in gamelan you're you can't play gamelan on your own you're dependent on everyone else um, and it's a music of relationships the things that make the music work are the way the parts relate together um, and, it, and it's very satisfying to me that once you know the idiom, you can sit down and join in a piece which you've never heard before, uh, and you can listen to the internal cues in the music which tell you how to play the piece. I mean, it depends what instrument you're playing, of course, but, um, uh, yeah. I, I'm also surprised to meet people and they say, oh, yes, my child did it at school. It seems to be quite popular in schools around the country, which I didn't know. Everyone was very excited, really. I mean, the kids having the gamelan in the room 
with lots of children running by and they'd all press their faces up against the glass walls uh, very excitedly and wanted to come in. So there was a lot of enjoyment about it uh, and the special needs group too, also challenged by it. And, um, but they're all very excited, I would say. Um, and we learnt some simple pieces but also just did very simple uh, kind of improvisation and compositional things with them and it lends itself very well to that I think and then at the end they all queued up to play the gong <laughs> that's always the favourite um, so yeah the, the, the vast majority of, of kids we, we've also done some workshops in uh, um, special schools for special needs uh, and you know depending on the, the level of those individual kids sometimes all you can do is get them to, to keep a beat but for them you can you can see that they're getting a lot out of that experience profoundly disabled uh, kids and they can join in with the beat and they can touch the instruments the drums and feel vibrations from it and they 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 love that you yeah you can see how much they're they're appreciating this and that can be a very very moving thing to do um, you know just seeing the different sort of levels of, of ways in which people can engage with gamelan um, from just enjoying the, the feel and the sound of the instruments to you know playing a relatively simple piece or a, one of the less complicated instruments in a group through to people who are really pushing themselves to you know, and I mean, again, in, in this group, Kampong Reading group, we have a gradient of, uh, how can I put it? It's a gradient of ambition, put it that way. Some people are content just to play Balungan and to be part of the, that's enough for them. And again, that's a brilliant thing about Gamelan. You don't have to push people beyond the level that they're comfortable with. Um, people who are ambitious and want to have a go can push themselves and do something a bit more, more challenging. Well, I set it up seven years ago. Um, it wasn't a charity initially, it was just a project, a pilot project. I had this idea that it would be good to try out running gamelan workshops in prisons. Um, it just sort of came to me as an idea, but I kind of knew that it was worth trying because I knew from my own experience of playing gamelan how beneficial it is and how good it is at making you feel part of something bigger and just how kind of therapeutic it is it makes you feel better about yourself and about your situation so um, I did some kind of research and found out that basically nobody was doing gamelan in prisons there's quite a lot going on out you know in the community in schools and maybe with other kind of groups similar groups like people with mental health problems or alcohol misuse problems or whatever, but nothing in prison. So I just thought it would be really good to set it up as a pilot project just to see whether it would work. And we did some kind of initial projects in a few prisons back in 2003, and it just seemed to work really well. So um, it kind of expanded and developed from there. So now it's a proper registered charity in its own right. I've told the people this story that it was, it was an element of panic because I was sitting at home one day thinking, right, this concert's coming up in about just over a month's time or something. And I was looking down at what I thought we could do in it. And I thought, yeah, even if we do this big gunding bonang and play it many times, we can't make it last more than half an hour. <laughs> and that's not long enough for <laughs> even half a concert. So we've got to get more pieces. I thought, I don't know anymore. I, I'm not confident with anything else. So I'm just going to have to compose one. <laughs> then um, we did, oh, um, I think we did the Edinburgh Festival. <laughs> Can you believe this? I mean, I know. I, I think that was the same summer. Because Jan, again, was just coming and saying, well, now I've booked the Edinburgh Festival. Or like the Fringe, of course, not the real, not, not the main festival. But Queen's Hall, I think it's called Queen's Hall or something in Edinburgh, it's a lovely building. And we thought, wow, this is fantastic. We're only on the fringe, we're not the main festival, but they're giving us this beautiful hall. Um, and we did a couple of concerts there. I think we were there for four or five days or something. Um, 
but I can't remember exactly, uh, that might have been the next one, but, but Jan was just so active in getting concerts all over the place that we ended up being this sort of crazy touring group who were just driving around the country doing gamelan concerts all over the place, you know. And they did some in Scotland and up, well, of course, Edinburgh, but, um, but he was just getting them wherever. I can't, I can't remember the list offhand, but um, kept us very busy.